Yeah, dang it, I went and left that list. I just had like a, I had like a notepad sitting next to me all day on my desk. <laughs> and anytime I thought of something that I wanted to talk about, I would write it down real quick. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna miss anything. <laughs> and then I got like halfway home. I was like, oh man, I left that list sitting Oh, you left desk. it at work? Oh yeah, it's sitting at work, <laughs> yeah. But, so this is the first video of this kind that I've ever done. Um, I wanted it to be more of like a podcast type style. Um, and I wanted to bring you in on it because you've built one of these boats before. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> you were the inspiration, man. You, uh, oh, that's awfully thoughtful. You built this thing and you brought it to my house in Corpus and you took me fishing on it and we caught a few fish. Yeah. And I thought it was just the coolest little thing. So I decided I was gonna build one. And of course COVID hit. And so I had all this time to just hang out in my garage and build a boat. So, but. Was it the actual going on the boat that like made you want to build it? Or was it that like we went to go get bait and like every dude we passed was like, <laughs> hey man, did you make that boat? <laughs> like everybody in I, Corpus was so excited about these, these things. These things catch some attention. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, I yeah. think. I think seeing it and seeing that it looked, I mean, it's a small skiff. It looks like yeah. a skiff. It doesn't look like a little ginu or anything. It looks like a small skiff. Yeah. So I think just like the shape of the thing really caught my eye. And then once we were on the water and you <laughs> fired that motor up and we started going and I wasn't having to paddle <laughs> for four paddle. miles. Oh. I was like, yeah, I need one of these. It changes the world. And oh. that's the whole reason I built it is because <clears throat> I, like when we moved to Houston, I would go from spring to Galveston, so it's already an hour and a half. So you burn up an hour and a half of time just getting down there, and then you'd like kayak, and then you'd be yep. kayaking for like 45 minutes or an hour trying to get somewhere. Right. And you weren't doing any fishing, and you're just getting blown around all day. And so I said, forget it. And I was going to do one of those, um, the solo skiffs. <coughs> yeah. Like the roto molded deals. Mm -hmm. And I was like, eh, I'm not spending however much they are. I mean, they're great. They're, they're cool. awesome. The thing about the solo skiff is it's solo. Like, it is. It does a little more solo. You're, which you're, I think they say these are supposed to be like one man skiffs too. I think they do, but you can depends get how big the man is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It depends on how big your friend is. <laughs> yeah, both pretty short. Exactly. Guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it works out okay. Oh, uh, uh, you would not believe I've had so many people asking for this video, and I almost cracked and just went into the garage like I always do, and just <laughs> held up the camera and started talking. But I wanted to bring you in on it because you built one first. Oh, you I were the first it. one I know that built one, and. Uh, so people want to know what did we learn uh the tips and tricks things we would have done different things like that um and like we were saying earlier i wrote down all the things i wanted to talk about <laughs> and left them sitting on the desk at work so i'm going to do my best to recall everything that i wanted to say but no particular order um at first i was like i'm going to think like start to finish lifespan of the boat what did i learn but i'm going to be jumping all over the map yeah. so but the first thing that I think I want to talk about that I definitely learned was uh, when I poured the buoyancy foam. So yeah. I know you did your foam different and I actually want to talk about that too. So when I did my foam, I ordered it from Boat Builder Central. It was a two part mixture type of deal. Um, it was kind of a pour one, pour the other and move quick because yep. it's about to start blowing up. And you fill each chamber inside of the boat, right? Would you level it off? Or does I, it just like go to the level and then stop? No, it, it goes all over the place. It's, okay. it's and you gotta cut and it back and you down. You gotta cut that? it down, yeah. How do you cut it down? I used, uh, I bought just like a little, it's not a hacksaw, but it looks like a, it's got a real narrow blade on it. It's like a little wood saw with a flexible, flexible blade that I could just kind of bend and then follow the okay. top of the wood. Okay, all right. Um, but the thing that I learned about the foam was it gets really hot. Yes. And when it gets really hot, it can warp the wood. Mm -hmm. And it did warp my boat. Really? So I had these beautiful sides on it <laughs> that I was so proud of. And I poured the foam in. And the next day, I went into the garage, and it was all wavy, both sides. Oh, wow. And I freaked out. Did it, what did it do to the bottom? Did it make the bottom like bow in or bow out? No, the bottom all? was OK. The bottom did fine. It mm -hmm. was just the sides. And I thought it was the expansion of the foam, but that didn't make sense because there's nothing yeah. capping it. So right. it can expand up. It was the heat. Yeah. The heat made it move. Um, so some guys on the boat building forum told me to put that trim piece, this trim piece, yep. do it before you do the foam. And that oh. trim piece will hold the shape of your boat. And luckily for me, the trim piece also 
brought the shape back. So it pulled those <laughs> sides back up. It trued everything back, trued everything back up. But it's, you did a lot thicker trim piece than I did too. Yeah, I think I did. Because I? I went to Home Depot and bought quarter round. And yeah. That's well, like cheaper than actually doing it correctly. And that's- I don't know. Mine and the tips cheaper. and tricks, I, might, I should have done that. Mine was, you know that furring? Yeah. That cheap furring, that cedar. Yeah. It's like cedar strips. That's what that is. Really? Yeah. Oh. It was, I think it was less than $3 a, a board. A stick. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it was super cheap and it was flexible. Yeah. Um, and I think mine was treated. So, which that's a whole debate yeah. when building whether or not to use treated wood. Um, but for this project, I figured treated wood was going to be fine, especially on that trim piece because it's not really. Ah, it'll be fine. No and it's going to get beat up. It's like that's going to be what is getting banged against stuff. And that the actually, most, other than the line. That brings me to my second point. So, I, so first, so buoyancy foam, I learned put the trim piece on before you pour it. It will keep the shape of your boat true. Yeah. Now, the trim piece, the second thing that I wish I had done was put a rub rail. An actual like rubber yeah. rubber rail all the way around because can you not I, add one now? I could, I could, but then I'm drilling into the paint, yeah, and I feel like I that could crack or it just leaves room for moisture to get in yeah. there. Um, I could still do it though, and if I, it's, it's treated and all that, yeah. I mean, I understand like not wanting to get any moisture behind the paint and then having it flake off. Exactly, but it's gonna flake off when it bangs against. And like, that's what it's doing. I I wish I could grab the camera and show it to everyone, but we're tethered to these microphones, so we're not going to move around. Um, but yeah, all along the edge, you could go and find 10 different spots now where the paint is yeah. dinged because of it bumping up against a dock or whatever. Well, you can see on the bottom of mine, like mine has a few more years of age and a lot less craftsmanship in it, but <laughs> it, not it, true. Uh, it has a lot of paint chipping off. So that's going to be like a redo project, but that bump rail would be nice. So. Yeah, it would make me feel better when it starts bumping into things. So they're they're not cheap, it, which is part of the reason I didn't do it. I, I priced it out and I think to get the actual system, it's like three or 400 bucks. Oh, really? Yeah. So then I started looking at other ways of doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and people said to take just like that, like a black water hose and slice oh, it oh. and then screw that to the edge of your boat. But then it's, and you got a hose on the side then of your boat? I got, I got a water hose got a on hose the side of, of my boat. You go through all this effort and like <laughs> tipping the paint and all this stuff, and then you've got a $10 length of hose right. across it. So and that, mine could use the improvement, <laughs> but yours, you can't go doing stuff like that. Oh, you man. You can't go do that. you got to buy nicer hose. I could probably it's find like some high-dollar stuff. Yeah, yeah, I could get a red one. That would look good. It yeah. would go with get it. Get some pinstripes. I think, I think it'd be all right. But, you know, as long as you don't bump it against stuff, you'd be all right. Yeah, or I just fall back on the fact that the trim piece was installed to act as a rubber rail and just be comfortable with it getting banged You gotta up. have some character marks. Yeah, it's gotta show its age, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can see all the age on this one. Like, see on the side, you can see on, on the left-hand side, the all the paint chipping off that side yeah. from bumping up against docks when yep. you're like trying to tie up to a dock. Yep. I will say, I haven't seen this boat in three years. Yeah. Over three years. Yeah. Because Noah wasn't born. Oh. And it, it, you definitely have been using it. And I'm glad to see that. Like, it's, <laughs> it looks like a boat that gets fished out of. Not nearly enough, but it's either a storage unit because stuff sits on top of it in the garage. Yeah, yep. And then moving was kind of hard on it. But when it does go out, it gets a pretty hard ride. So, <laughs> unfortunately. I noticed you don't have that same scupper hole in the back of your transom. So I cut mine differently, and that was part of the deal, is I kind of made a, uh, there's actually that board at the top, it's the same, it's that protection board for the engine. Okay. I just didn't screw mine in. Mm -hmm. So that sits at the bottom. If you move that, there's like three holes in the back, and that's oh. my drain. So it was much smaller. I just, I thought it was so big, and it was so over the top, and I so don't build boats, that mm -hmm. I was like, man, that just seems like a lot of hole to have in the boat. Yeah. And I, I've almost flipped it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is pretty good though. So one of the, like the best days of fishing we had, it was me and another guy and we both caught a limit of redfish and a, and a few, and they were like big, oh, nice. big redfish too. Fun. It was awesome. Oh, that's awesome. I got so excited. We we're having the best time ever. We we're just like following this pot of them around and just pulling them out. And so finally I like, got, oh, well, we got to go home. Well, all the fish were like, st I thought he'd pulled them in. He thought I'd pulled them in. All the fish were like still laying on the side and he was sitting in the front 
and I was in the back, and so I got the tiller in my hand, and we get ready to hang off, and there's a stringer full of like, you know, 20 or 30 pounds of fish, which is a whole lot more when you go to drag them. Yeah. So like I start to go, and it like pulls the whole boat. So I'm like really? going into a, like a left-hand turn, and it's pulling it, and so like water actually came in the left-hand corner, huh. and so it actually pulled water in the boat, and yeah. it just self-bailed out. Yeah. And, like I've never rolled the the boat at all, but I've had like, and I've also had water come over the front. Mm -hmm. So if you go on a Lake, Lake Conroe on any given day, it's um, a lot of it's like riprap all the way around the sides of the lake. Okay. So it just like all the waves instead of like going and like hitting the sides and mm -hmm. like dampening out, they just bounce back off. So you get like these huge rollers. Oh, I see. Yeah. And I've had like full waves come over the top and come like lift stuff just sitting on the deck and push it back and it'll bail out. Like it gets pretty exciting, but. Dang. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't been on any really rough water. The first time I took it out was in the bay on the Laguna Madre and it was pretty rough, but it wasn't bad. So like what, like 10 miles an hour, 16 miles an hour, 14 mile an hour wind? Um, it was, that day it was probably 16 or 17 yeah. because my limit with the kayak is 15 and it yeah. was definitely above that. Yeah. So. It gets pretty sporty <clears throat> when you like, trucking across and you go down to one of the troughs and the end of the boat <laughs> is below the level of the water. Oh, it's not a great feeling, oh. but they do great though. It's they bail pretty impressive. quick. Yeah. They self bail pretty I mean, fast. as long as you're going like into the weight, like in, <laughs> in, in, we're going across, if you're going across, so there was one day where uh, I was uh, trout fishing and, and we were coming back across uh, like Chaco Bayou or something like that. And so we would have to like go and then like cut into it, like try and go the waves were coming across. I don't, I must, I don't know which direction they were coming from, but we basically had to go across the bay to get there. Yeah. And we would have to like go and cut and go and cut oh, wow. and go and cut to like try and, cause if you get like parallel with them, you don't want them like coming over the side. Right. So that's right. not a very comfortable feeling. Man, I want to, so this October, I want to try to take it to all the way across the Laguna to that San Jose Island. Yeah. There's some really good fly fishing for redfish on the backside of that island. And that's my concern is if the wind picks up get stuck on that out trek there. across yeah. or back, yeah, it could get hairy in that boat. But if you can get it out there, it would be the perfect boat. For oh yeah. Pulling around those marshes and fly fishing. Uh, it'd be cool. See if the deer came out yet, but. Are they coming? No, not yet. Well, if there's a, a lesson learned on your boat, what do you think it would be? One of the biggest lessons you learned during the construction of it. The, two of the biggest things I think I learned were like working with epoxy. I'd done very little with epoxy before this. Mm -hmm. And so laying out the fiberglass and then epoxying it, how I did that, I was trying to do it like whenever I could. So basically, and we talked about this before, like you go out and build it and when you've got little kids, it's like everybody goes to bed, work is done. You'll come out and you'll work on it for like an hour at a time, which is really 30 minutes of unpacking all the equipment, <laughs> 30, like, you know, 30 minutes of working on it and then like 10 minutes of putting everything away. Yeah. And when you do that, it's very hard to do these things in small, mm -hmm. small chunks. And I would just do it any time of the year I got. And so doing it in the fall or doing it in colder temperatures mm -hmm. and trying to get epoxy to set up, like I learned my lesson a couple of uh, times on that. Yeah. Of just, hey, Shouldn't have done it. I knew I knew better, but I thought I could get away with it. It was like we were in Houston, so fall is not really that cold. Right. But it was just cool enough where it really messes up with that the the reaction, the A and the B part, yep. and it's setting up properly, and it yep. really extends that dry time, mm -hmm. and that presents some issues. But yeah, we were able to overcome and, and kind of yeah. move past it. But I think that was a big lesson. And then how we did, I the foam like what you were talking about. Yeah. So instead of doing the mixing two part <coughs> foam and pouring it in section by section. I had a customer that did spray and foam like closed cell foam for houses. So mm -hmm. you spray in between the studs and then you go and cut it off kind of like what you're talking sure. about. I say, hey, this is perfect. I got a boat that needs this and they have to run off test all their equipment. So I was like, I'll just bring the boat up there one day. Can you all fill this up with foam? Well, they took fill it up with foam quite <laughs> seriously, <laughs> very seriously. And they were a little bit ambitious with the foam and that stuff is not easy to cut back out of there. So I have some foam like in the, in the compartment up front, I have foam in there. I like to say like, you know, the old boat commercials, I don't even remember whose boat it was, but the where they'd like chainsaw it in half yep. and the boat would still float. Yep. It's the same thing with That's this one. Like, thing. I mean, it was like, I greatly appreciate it. It was awesome, but I think it made more work after the fact. Yeah. But I did also didn't have to, you know, the cost of foam was not in it. So that well, helps Oh yeah, too. and that's huge because that stuff is not cheap. Right, right. It's not. So that, 
that's awesome that you had it. Did you have the deal where you had to get more epoxy as well, like more than what was yep, recommended? I did. I did too. I did. I think I, I don't remember how much more I got. Yeah. I think it, so Boat Builder Central sells the gallon kit and then they sell, is it a half a gallon kit? I don't remember. It's a step down. I don't remember how much it was. I know for sure I got the smaller kit after the initial gallon kit. Mm -hmm. um, I need to go back and check. I might have gotten another gallon after that. Oh, I think I definitely did. It was a lot more. Have apart. you it, weighed what the total weight of the boat is? Mm -mm. I'd I be interested to see because I think they give like an estimated weight yeah, of what it's supposed do. to do. Mm -hmm. And I know that mine is severely over that. Yeah, mine's that heavy. Weight. Yeah. Mine's heavy. But I can still like with much difficulty, like unload it and load it by myself. It just looks yeah. terrible. <laughs> that, okay, so let's talk about that. So you, and when you built the boat, this was part of the plan, was to have a boat that could fit in the right. bed of your yeah. truck. Yep. You didn't want to deal with a trailer. Right. You wanted a boat you could haul on your own and get it in the bed of your truck. And it's worked out for you. Yep. Um, how is it hauling that thing in the truck? I mean, is it? Oh, it's great. For hauling it in the truck, it's awesome because I don't like like dealing with the trailer and it's been really nice because it's light enough and especially if you have two people it makes it super easy because mm -hmm. if you have two people unloading it's no big deal like i can do it on flat land like we'll go to like you don't have to go to a boat ramp which right. is nice like right. it's, i wouldn't go to places where you like have to haul a kayak in mm -hmm. but we've gone to like some off the road places and like slid it down an embankment and put it in and it's yeah. not really that big that's what deal. we did at wilson's cut yeah and yep. that yeah and we've done like stuff probably harsher than that before <laughs> really yeah and it's not a it's not undoable, I guess. It's some work, but it's something you can do and then just throw it in the back of the truck and, and you're on to the next thing. Yeah. I know a lot of people have asked me, do you have to have a trailer for it? No, the answer yeah. is you have never had a trailer for this. I boat. didn't have a trailer. We made a bed extender and that's a okay. must. You gotta have a bed extender and then okay. some type of marker because it sticks way out the truck. So okay. like as far as the, you know, I have an F-150 and it, it's like not a hauling issue. It's only you know, a couple hundred pounds or whatever it is. Right. But man, the first time, this was pretty terrible. I was, you know, I'd never run it before, but I took it down to Galveston to run it. And I put in it, uh, oh gosh, one of the bait shops. I forget which one it was. Um, it was near Tiki Island. So I put it in. It's no problem. Like dumping it off the boat ramp is not a big deal. So I like dump it off. I go like cruising through the bay. You know, you feel like you're just like flying. Like on yeah. a little boat like this, when you're going yeah. 15 <laughs> miles an hour, you feel like you're about to take off. Yeah. So I'm like cloud nine. I'm like, I'm the best dang shipbuilder there ever. It's like the Pirates <laughs> of the Caribbean music in the background. Like I think I'm a legend. <laughs> and I get back and I'm like trying to load this thing up. So I'm like, all right, it's time to go home. Like no big deal. So you put it stern in, in first and uh, I'm backing it up. Well, boat ramps like, drop off severely you know mm -hmm. there's not a lot right. of like you know the whole point is to drop it off well if you're a dude out there trying to lift a oh, boat no. like three feet out of the water and like stick it on a bed extender and then like pull it up yeah and the other end's buoyant and it's yep. just trying to like float out i jacked with that thing for like 45 minutes oh no and I'm trying, like, <laughs> physics is not my best subject, <laughs> and it showed, because I was suffering. And it's like, right, so there's like, you know, the boat ramp's right here, and there's like a bar right here with outdoor seating facing the boat ramp. So I give these people, oh, like, the no. greatest show of their life oh. of, like, some dude just suffering. And I was, like, so close to asking somebody to help me. <laughs> well, then I finally came to the conclusion. I was like, oh, I just, finally, I just backed the truck up, like, almost, you know, further in down the boat ramp so that I could get it up and, and got it up. But okay. two guys definitely makes it a whole lot easier. Um, that was one of the little lessons, <laughs> that, more of a physics lesson than anything else. Well, the trailer doesn't make it a lot easier. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, was I launching it? I must've been launching it one day. No, Doing I was anything loading. Anything by yourself is tough though. Anything, yeah. It, dealing with a boat alone no. is a tough thing. Yes. Especially if there's a little bit of wind and it doesn't take a lot of wind to push these things around. <laughs> they start going. Man, without the, uh, I don't know what you call them, but the, the two rods on the back end of the trailer to help oh, yeah. Yeah, get yeah, your yeah. boat lined up right. Yeah. Without those, oh man, this thing is not easy to load. <laughs> it is a pain, but. Um, so moving on from the foam, I'm kind of building the boat again in my head, trying to remember all the, all the things I wanted to talk about. Uh, the other, the next lesson learned was the blocking that goes in under your grab rail. So the plans yeah. say to install, I guess blocking is the right word. It's 
they say to glue two sheets of that plywood yep. together and put it on your cleats underneath the deck so you have something to screw into. Yep. Right? My grab rail, and maybe I did something wrong. I don't think I did. My grab rail is too wide. It's wider than that blocking that I installed. So I'm only hitting. Is it past? So the feet are wider than the piece of wood that I installed. Yep. Um, so when I screw in, I think I'm only getting one screw per foot that actually hits that blocking. Yeah. So I've got two screws on each foot that are just in quarter inch plywood, which is not ideal. I mean, I, you're not hanging on that thing. No, like, it's fine. Ideally, unless I, you like really lean on it or fall on it or something. I bet, I mean. I think it's gonna be okay. With how many like, yeah, 16 b screws in that thing. You're right. Yeah, there's a lot on that thing. Yeah. But in the future, if I had to do it over, I think what I would do so the plans call for you to install that blocking in that center uh, right. cell or compartment, whatever. I think I would also extend it to the two, yeah. one on either side. I so think I did the same thing. The entire width yeah. is the blocking. And then you've got room to do custom grab rails. You don't have to think about that because... That was not a custom one. Was that an off-the-shelf one or is that a custom one? It's custom, but it's... It's custom. Yeah. I think it's. <laughs> yeah. I they make they, ten of them at a time. Yeah, but it's they make custom. ten at a time and then sell them. <laughs> and there's not. I think the wiggle room you get is there's two different heights. That's the tall one, and then you can add rod holders. Yeah. Um, other than that, they're pretty standard. So so yeah, that that would be something that I would do different in the future is just put that blocking along the entire. Do you width. like having the rod holder on there? Sorry, as a side note. Uh, yes. I wish I had put another rod holder on there because I like to fish. If I'm saltwater fishing, I like at least two rods. And then if I'm fishing with somebody, I want to give them two rods. Yeah. So I wish I had two on the grab rail and then Yeti actually makes some rod holders mm -hmm. and clip into these sides. So yep. I'm going to buy a couple of those for like buddy rod holders. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like it. I, li I wish I had two. Yeah. I always have a rod on the deck right now yep. as it is. Um, but yeah, I think I like it. And that's something I could do after the fact, too, is have another yeah. one welded on there. Yeah, it's so. a big deal. Uh, um, let's see, what was the next thing that I wanted to talk about? I guess going forward in the boat build, I wish I had put two tie-down points on the transom, on the back of the transom, to tie the boat down to the trailer. So I didn't do that. And I did that intentionally. I, I left them off intentionally, thinking... I would just strap it down like a kayak, always mm -hmm. just just like I have it now, just one strap all the way around the thing. Where's your baby deer back? Oh, there? we got some she's deer walking, hanging she's out. Walking through the yard, oh, the neighbor's man. yard over there. Oh, I see her. <laughs> mm. That's a healthy looking deer. Those fawns are getting really big. Wow. Well, I was very surprised. Like they still got spots, but they're getting big. That's so cool. Yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> we need to introduce you. I never even told anybody who you were. Did we check to make sure it was like? Um, I can check. Well, that I just recording. Well, I just want to make sure like sound and everything and light. And all. I know you kind of did, but I haven't. Oh, oh here. don't move, Travis. <laughs> the lighting looks good. Go. We're recording. Okay, cool. And uh, so I'll give you something to cut out. The audio. No, we can leave this in. All right, there I don't you care. go. So Sorry, you asked. Oh, the the rails on the back. The, the tie down points, yes. yeah. So I, what I realized the first time I put it on the trailer was that you want, it, you want some way to keep your boat from shifting left and right mm -hmm. on the trailer. Because on this one, and most boat trailers, it's just sitting on some bunks. Yep. And so you have nothing to prevent it from bouncing left and right on the highway. Luckily it never happened to me, but I realized it and I knew it was a problem. So what I've been doing is I've, you might be able to see it. I know you can, the camera might be able to see it. I've got a tie down strap tied to each side of the grab rail mm -hmm. and yeah. then it goes under and ties to the trailer. So that prevents it from shifting. But what that's also doing is it's putting torque. It's putting weird pressures on the grab rail. I don't think it's ever going to do anything, but it's pulling mm. the grab rail in a way that it wasn't designed to be pulled. It might be something that shows sign of wear long term. I don't know. But if I had just bought two more of the, uh, D loops, what do you call them? Eyelets. The guy ones? on the bow, like the bow eye. Yeah. Yeah, those. If I had just gotten a couple of those and screwed them into the transom before I painted it, yeah. I'd have a tie down point. See, what I did instead, and I'm not having mine on a trailer, it's a li little different setup because I 
butt up the back end of the boat up against the back of the truck. And so right. it's really not a big deal. I'm tying off this eye to my bed extender and okay. then I run one over the top. So it's, it's gotcha. different. But what I did on the back coming from suffering and trying to load it by myself is mm -hmm. I just put handles like two oh, like, did you really? galvanized handles on the back. Oh. And I think that's like, that's something I didn't do for like two or three years after I got the boat or yeah, after I, don't I had think, the boat I don't built. think you had it when we went no. out. And so it makes it terrible oh. to load when you don't have anything because you're trying to grab onto that thing and you don't there's really not and it's slick because it's, it's been slick, in the water but it's wet it is oh slick. my gosh yes. i dropped your boat remember when we loaded it oh, <laughs> a lot of people dropped it. i think i had the back end really? and we lifted and it just bloop, slipped oh. right out of my hands and oh, i felt man. so bad yeah yeah they're it's slippery. super slippery so that putting the handles on there that made it a whole lot better they don't look great and it was definitely after the fact so you got to go through the fiberglass through the paint all that but mm -hmm. it makes loading a whole lot better. Okay. Just because it gives you something. To, and then it would give you something to tie off to. So yeah, if I were to put, would. if you would add them, I would do handles on the back. Handles. It gives you something to grab onto. That's a great idea. Especially if you're like pulling it up and down or like out of, you know, whatever cut you're in. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you're dry launching it, yep. you got something to grab a hold yes. of. And yep. yep. That is a good idea. And it serves two purposes. Huh. So we should talk about how we know each other. Because we never oh, yeah. did that. People are probably wondering who you are. Other than a boat builder. So <laughs> so the reason that I saw the boat that you built is because we've been friends for a long time. Oh, yeah. I don't, we met when we were nine, yeah. eight, Seven. somewhere in there. I don't know. I don't so, know. Yeah. It's been lots of years. Um, and obviously been good friends ever since. So Travis inspired me to build the boat because he built one first. I loved it. Um, so that's why he's on this podcast there you go. slash video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. So the next thing, do you have anything on your list in your mind? Going back to the beginning, like the tools that you need to build this boat. Oh. So this is one of the things that like when I go into a project and it's, I try to get this to improve the way I think about things. However, the tools that you need to build this thing, I had like, circular saw and mm -hmm. I mean that was 90% of what I used and a sander and mm -hmm. like painting equipment and a drill but I mean I feel like majority of the work that I did with this was like a six or eight inch battery powered DeWalt yep circular saw yep yeah and like did you have any other well, you had like the fairing the the sanding uh the uh, rotary sander? No, not the rotary sander. Like for the big flat for when you're actually fairing it out. Did you do that? Or did no, you just do it with the rotary uh, sander? The fairing board. Yeah, no, fairing board. I didn't. I mean, not that you have to buy one of those, but yeah, most I didn't people do make them. Yeah. Um, you're just trying to have a big flat piece so you're like having flat and uniform surfaces. Yeah, I think the idea of the fairing board is you have, at this point, your boat hull would be covered in the fairing compound. So and after fiberglass. After, so this is after fiberglass, yep, and then fairing compound. Wow. And that stuff scuffs real easily. So you put, you build a board, I don't know, two, three feet long and probably six inches wide. And most guys will put like handles or whatever on it. Yep. Cover it in sandpaper and then you run it along the hull of the boat and any high spots will get scuffed and low spots won't. So it just identifies where the attention yeah. areas are. Yep. I did not do that. I probably should have with as much time as I spent trying to get this thing perfect. <laughs> that would have probably helped save me a lot of time. Clearly I didn't either. So it's <laughs> not like I didn't do it. And that I'm glad you brought that up because that is something that I would it's do. It's a big step. And it was like, like you talked about earlier, I was trying to work so fast. Mm -hmm. And I think I definitely rushed through some things like doing it again. There's things that I will do differently in the future or I'd spend more time on. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but the basic tool. So going back to that yeah. portion of it, like cutting it out, I think there's a couple of different ways. Like my understanding is now like talking to other people that have now built them, mm -hmm. you can print out like full size plans, like with the paper. Like two a scaled? Yes. What? Two size. Oh my gosh. Can you believe that? No. It would make it, oh. oh, so to explain the difference of that, I, you could you could explain the way I did it, and I, I think the way you did it too. Yeah, probably. Is like they give you a little, you know, PDF, It's mm -hmm. a, and then I print it off on eight, and, you know, eight by 11 
sheet of paper and they give you every dimension. So you have to dimension, like taking four by eight marine grade plywood and then dimensioning out each slat of this thing, yep. drawing that out, which is a pain all its own. Mm -hmm. And then after you do that, then cutting everything out. Like there was so much time, I know it felt like it took forever for me just to cut yeah. out every single component. It was so frustrating because like, I don't have a boat. I've got a pile of sawdust and a couple of pieces that I hope fit together. <laughs> right. like, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, that took half the time. Yeah. I really yeah. think it took. Cause half once you the do time. that, it feels like you got a boat yeah. and you like, or you stitch it together. Oh man. I'm like, Phew. it stitches together and it just like pops open like an yeah. origami crane. Like yeah. it just is a boat. <laughs> Which brings me to something that I forgot about. When I got to that step, so at this point in my build, all my panels were cut out. I had stitched it together. My dad flew into Corpus Christi for a weekend to help me with this step. And it was time to start gluing the seams yep. with a thickened epoxy. Yep. So we're gluing, we're gluing. We spent an entire Saturday afternoon gluing all the seams, getting yep. everything just right. We got the frame dropped in, we're gluing everything. Sunday morning, we go out to check on it, see how it's set up. Everything set perfect. Epoxy's hard, the boat feels solid. We go to kind of lift the boat up, and it doesn't move. <laughs> lift a little harder, and the whole table comes up with the boat. <laughs> oh, no. We had glued the boat to the table. And I was working on a, I had like a three quarter inch piece of plywood on top of two sawhorses, yeah. it was my table. We glued the boat to that piece of plywood. Oh, no. And we pulled and we pulled, and finally <laughs> it gave loose and it ripped the ply off yeah. of the plywood. It delaminated the thing. Oh, yeah. Um, so <laughs> we learned all you got to do is put a piece of plastic tarp under it, and the epoxy does not stick to plastic. So yeah, a little extra sanding. <sighs> a little extra sanding. <laughs> Which I, I have a disdain for sanding after doing this whole oh, project. Oh, man. Because you just sand and you sand and you sand and then you sand some more. Mm -hmm. And I could still sand some more on this. Oh, because yeah. Because it's like. It can never end. Yeah. I think you could just keep going on it. And then Do you wear about, a respirator on all that? Yeah. When I got to sanding the epoxy, yeah. I wore a respirator because that stuff is so fine. Oh, it's so nasty. I Inhaling so much of that. Oh yeah, I bought a it's got a terrible smell to it. Yep. And then your boogers like start itching. Yep. And then you're blowing out like stalactites. I so, like, don't do it. Nope, <laughs> it's terrible. Nope. Yeah, I might have taken years off my life by not wearing a respirator right. for, yeah, for a little sure. bit. No, that was like first when I actually got a good one. Yeah. And I'm really glad that I did because mm -hmm. that stuff is super nasty. Okay, how about this? If I had to oh, do it. Oh, and I got that dust all over the garage. That's what I was about to talk about. <laughs> okay, okay. If I were to do it again, I would buy one of those fancy sanders or whatever they are that has like the shop back attached to it. Yeah. And as you're sanding, it just sucks that stuff up. Yeah. I think that would have helped. I don't think it would have prevented it completely. No, I think you almost have to do one of those drop rooms or like yep. the big, uh, you know, you can just do like sheets or whatever around sheets it, like a sanding room it. basically. That's, but. I would probably do that. Cause yeah. Because the oh. worst thing is that, that also it's super, it's fine and it's fine fiberglass. Yeah. And so it's itchy. It's itchy. It's itchy powder that gets on everything. So right. any like shelf we had, we like I was cleaning off a shelf a year later and you'd still be like having dust. So yeah. Yeah. Huge improvement that can be made on that for sure. Yep. I would definitely buy the vacuum sander and probably create a little room with plastic. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That stuff was terrible. My wife would be much more appreciative if I did that. And I was pulling out baby stuff in the garage yeah. in this new garage and putting it up in the attic and it has a, la a, a layer of that dust oh, all like over fine. it fine and like that was cocaine powder it's terrible it's everywhere yeah yeah so trying to mitigate the mess yeah is something that a person should invest some time in yep and a little bit of money because it's worth it because it will be part of the house otherwise yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. Okay, let's see. There was something else on the forefront of my mind. What was it? What was... Oh! Okay. So, I decided I wanted a shiny boat, so I spent the extra money on the expensive paint. Yep. And it was a two-part deal, just like everything that this thing's built out of. Yep. Two-part paint. I... Rolled it on. I tipped it with a paintbrush, and I think I I Did got you thin it, it though. 
Uh, yeah, it? it has a thinner. Okay. Yeah, so it's more than two parts, actually. Right, right, right. right. I think it's okay, three parts. That's, yes. Right? I think so. It does have a thinner, for right. sure. Well, this last time I took it out, I got it back on the trailer, and I noticed the paint on the back of the boat was, like, flaking off in a really weird way. Like, layers. Like, a layer of the paint would come up. The wood would not be exposed underneath. There'd still be more paint, but it was coming up. Did and you do multiple layers of paint, or is it just, like... It, it is two coats, so it could have been one entire coat that came up. And you know what it was that did it? It was the gasoline. The gasoline, oh, when I disconnected yeah. the hose from my gas tank, a little bit dripped on the paint, and it caused that paint to flake. Yep. So I would protect that paint in the back of the boat. And that's probably something I'm still going to do. Yeah, but how are you going to do that, though? Like, what does well, that mean? Like, how do you keep gas from getting on it, like, in a... I don't no. in that environment because those the hoses the little bulb hoses yes. they leak yeah they do i mean theoretically so i was showing you and i think the viewers know that marine mat is short oh, yeah. it didn't go all the yeah. way to the back of the boat that'd probably help but it, it might affect the marine mat too yeah it could affect the marine mat and and honestly the paint is cheaper than the marine mat so maybe <laughs> and okay so that's something that's worth talking about is part of the reason i use this paint I guess not all paint is repairable. I don't even know what that really means, but mm, yeah, I don't know. this paint they say is it's repairable. Okay. So I think they give you instructions on how to repair it. It requires some sanding and yep. whatnot, and then painting it, and it is like new again. Yep. So if the gasoline ever eats it up to the point where it just needs to be repaired, the paint is cheaper than marine mat. So I could just repair the paint. Yeah. Yeah, well, and you're going to need to touch it up anyway, like over time, yeah. getting it <laughs> yeah. abused of things. It's going to need it. And that, so yeah. like the paint was a big thing that I would definitely do differently on mine. So like the bottom is this green. Mm -hmm. I was going for more of like a seafoam green, like a cool green. Yeah. And it came out looking like a John boat. <laughs> and I was so frustrated. You know, you do like, you do that first like two or three foot section and you're like, well... I'm invested now. Yep. <laughs> like, I guess, I guess this is what we're doing. I guess this is what we're doing. Yeah. So, you know, I looked at the paint on, yeah, boatbuilder.com or whatever it is. And I was like, man, I'm in Houston. There's so much marine paint. Right. Like it's a, there's a lot of marine applications there. So I just went to like an industrial paint supplier mm -hmm. and told them what I was doing. I was like, Hey, you know, I have a boat build project. What do you recommend? And they're just like, Oh yeah, no problem. Go get it. You know, a color color card send give us the color card and you know we'll mix it to that specification and then you can paint it and so i did the white on top this is white hard to tell because oh, it's, it's brown now okay yeah. this was like screaming white like white is your cover okay like it matched my my cover at the front yeah and it's totally yellowed over time yeah and i don't know if that's because like it sits in the dark of the garage all the time. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, if you hide something behind, like where it's not exposed to light all the time, it'll, yeah. it, it'll actually darken or yellow. Right. I don't know if that's what caused it. Cause I mean, I can wash this thing. I've, I've bleached it. I've done stuff to try and bring that color, that white back to where it just doesn't look like brown and stained all the time. Right. But I think it's just the fading. So whatever the UV or not having enough UV mm -hmm. light on it for long enough, it's not you know, allow that color to stay that vibrant or, or clean white color. Right. So I think I would do that differently. I don't know what I would do because I kind of, I thought I'd, you know, had a pretty good research plan going into it. Right. And then on the color, I mean, it's, looks like a John boat. So <laughs> it looks <laughs> good, right. but I, right. you know, I, I've got a buddy that I worked with down in Corpus that he was always asking questions about the boat and yeah. how it was going. And I, as I was getting closer to painting it, he was asking what color I wanted to go with. And I told him I was thinking about going with an, a white or maybe just an off white. Yeah. And he's a big time fisherman and has lived on the salt water for a long time. And, and he said, the one thing to think about white is that it will, it will stain. Yep. It will stain very easily. Yep. And, uh, and that's what, you know, that's why I didn't go with white myself. Cause I was going to do that. And I thought he said, being in that salt water, getting it in any kind of mud or yep. just the sun or lack thereof. Oh yeah. will change the color of that. And white. you can see there are some definite stain marks on there, like yeah. closer to behind the grab rail, you can see where there's some stains. And so yeah, a definite consi uh, consideration for sure. And then how did you decide to go with the, the sea deck on top of that or the Marine deck on top of that? Um, 
I was gonna go with a non-skid, just like, like the that. Paint. The, the paint, the non-skid yep. paint. Um, but then I started researching different types of deck coverings, and I found C deck first, and I thought it looked really good, and it, I saw it was really expensive, <laughs> and so then I thought, okay, <laughs> is well, the what's... moral of the story here that we're just like cheapskates? Oh is that man, I, I think the thing is, if if you're building or your cost own boat, effective. if you're building your own boat, you're doing it because you don't have it the hard way. 50 or 60 <laughs> grand to buy a boat with, you know? You're doing yeah. it because you're trying to, it's a budget boat. Yeah. And uh, there's a pride of ownership that goes with that. Oh, there's something about building a boat too that just makes you feel good. Do you ever listen to the, uh, is it the Lyle Lovett song? Like, oh yeah. Uh, is it build a boat? Yeah, oh, we're gonna have to look it up. It's, I think it's called I, I building build a boat. boat. Yeah. Something listen like to that song, after building a boat, change your life. It'd make you feel good. Oh my gosh, yeah. let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> but no, so the Marine, I looked up, there's a, I figured I'll, I'll do the DIY version of the Marine mat and yeah. it looked pretty bad. I, I looked at some videos of people that you can buy stuff on Amazon. You oh, can yeah. buy this material yep. on Amazon. Yep. Yep. It's not all like grooved and routed out and everything, but it works. But it's just in like, it's like a 36 inch wide roll that's like eight feet long or something like right. that. And so you go and lay it out and then you've got to trim it all out. Yep. So like where yours, like you have nice lines and everything matches up and like the actual edges are machined. Yes. This is- It looks like a piece of foam that old you buddy that, scissors. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so Joe got a little aggressive with the uh, old box knife. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I didn't go with that. Yeah. Um, Marine mat, when I priced it out, was a little bit less expensive than the C deck. Yeah. Not a lot, but a little bit. And they were really responsive. Um, yeah, I'm glad I went with it. I think it looks, oh, it looks good. fantastic. I'm curious to see how it holds up over time. If it starts to fade, yep. if it starts to, like I showed you that divot that's already in it. I don't know yep. where that came from, but there's a divot in the marine mat um, that came from maybe setting a, something heavy on it. Um, but I am happy I went with it. It feels really good to go barefoot on it. Oh no. Oh, that's all yours, buddy. Oh. Nice right. little dude. All right. Made it all the way through the video. All weekend. the way through the video. <laughs> <laughs> Pat Green is doing a margarita and salsa fest in Kyle this month. Really? If you're interested. Oh, man. I like both those things. Yep. <laughs> Pat Green. All three of those margaritas things. Margaritas and yeah, salsa. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think we're going to go. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. What next? Have you ever, one of the things I think I would do differently, and you don't have to do this, but like for taking it duck hunting, like that was the other thing, is like going down oh, to the coast. Oh, yeah. We'd go down to the coast and we'd do like canoes and kayaks and bring decoys in and everything. Mm -hmm. I would probably paint the deck just a different color, just to try and make it not look like a dang oh, sign sitting out there. Camouflage it a little well, bit? Well, just, not I, mean, up camo, I mean, but... even like this is, is not going to be like, this where they're like, oh, that's the top of a boat. Just because, yeah. you know, you drag it 50 yards away and go stash it in the reed somewhere. Mm -hmm. I think I might do, whenever I do repaint it, like I refurbish this one, I think I will do the top a different color. Okay. And I might just do something, some sea decking like that that's brown because it's just not quite as abrasive or, you know, stick out right. quite as bad right. as the white. But. Yeah. How about being visible on the water to other boaters? That is definitely a concern. And I have never gone out like at night yeah, or like in low light mm -hmm. situations. Like I usually wait until it gets light enough because I don't, well, no, one, I don't have a light on right. here. I don't and have two, lights either. Like I don't want to go, I've gone into the intercoastal and areas like that, but usually I'm back in a marsh where people aren't flying by. Like I'm more of a risk to kayakers than other boats are to you, to me. Sure. And so I try, Anywhere I'm going to take this, I'm really trying to go somewhere that I'm not going to be running across other boats. Yeah. Or like people going full speed, because I don't want to sit in their wake, basically. So I don't yeah. want to sit there bobbing up and down. Yep. So if you do that, it makes the experience really good, because you can basically outrun all the kayakers that are and that's, hacking their way back there. Yeah. That's kind of what I've realized about these boats, is it's, it's a step up from a kayak. So you're going to yeah. be fishing these things pretty much where the kayakers are. So have you looked at like what your drift is? Like how, if you pull your motor up and you're just drifting yeah. how deep it is? I haven't. I've gone in some pretty shallow stuff and it hasn't hit bottom yet. Yeah. But I wouldn't say that I've gone less than six inches. Yeah. Um, I took it to the Colorado River 
Uh, back probably in Mar... No, when was that? I don't know. Early spring. April. May. Um, and there's some giant boulders where I, where I was fishing. Yep. And some of them came up really close to the surface of the water. Mm-hmm. And I probably got six inches, you know, in, in about six inch depth of water from the top of those boulders. And I didn't but like, scrape. But like on, like coming across like a, a sandbar or something like that, or like running in, cause you can, like if you're running, I you think can I'm pretty run, shallow. You can run way shallow. I mean, it's like on yeah. spit. Like you can. In fact, it gets up. So my mine will actually get up on plane, and yep. when it's up on plane, it gets a little bit shifty. <laughs> <laughs> like you can shift your weight a little you bit. You have and a nine. What's your horsepower? Mine's an eight. Eight, an eight horsepower. Okay, and I put a five on mine. Have you seen how fast it'll go? Like, have you? No, I haven't clocked it. Oh, you got it. You can get an app on your phone, and okay. that's what I did on mine. Is just put an app on my phone to yeah. see how fast it'll go. Because I had a five, and I like if you're going wind on your back, I think it was like fourteen or fifteen. And in a boat like this, that's pretty good. You're hauling them, and especially oh, if yeah. you're like in the marsh. So if like you're running through a trail that's you know ten, fifteen yards wide, and you're going fifty miles an hour, you're booking it. Like that's. Yeah. way fast and that that's was just you know fast. for pra- for practice that's right. not you know you're not really running like that i need to clock mine i've got a lot of people that have been asking for that video i well i said i was going to do it that i was going to do like a performance video yeah, yeah. and i haven't done it yet um oh boy hello you can got, i help you you got children what's up Good night. Uh, Noah. So Noah's in a big boy bed. What we call it. He's in oh, a yeah. twin size like, bed now. He's, he has he's the got ability freedom. to exit the prison. And he <laughs> learned that he has that ability recently. Love and you. He thinks it is the funniest thing. He will come around the corner with the biggest smile on his oh, face yeah. because he's got the freedom to do that. Yep. And he's never had it before. <laughs> <laughs> And it's hard to get mad at him because he's so happy. He's like pretty pleased about the situation. <laughs> he it's pretty feel, cool. Feel like a big kid. Oh, she sleepwalks kid. half the time. It's pretty exciting. Does she like, really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's yeah. scary. You all have like the locks up high on your doors. No, so thankfully she doesn't go outside. Okay, she doesn't go outside. That's so. good. That's Noah good. figured out how to open those doors. Oh and no. He'll, he'll like if we're both back in the bedroom or whatever. And he comes out of his room. He'll sometimes open the front door to see if we're outside because we'll sit on the front porch sometimes. Oh. And so I, that's like a reoccurring terrible thought I have is yeah. him just walking out the front door looking oh, for yeah, us. Oh, yeah, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be pretty scary. <sighs> so I got to get a lock up there so oh, he can't reach man. it. Yeah. Golly. Independent little turkey. Yeah. Um, what's next? What's next? So I've got one major lesson learned with this boat that we've talked about and i want to save it for last because it's a big deal and it's fun to talk about (laughs) so let me make sure i have nothing else no other lessons learned you got any other lessons learned i'm glad you brought up the tools that was a because really it really doesn't take a whole no it doesn't take a lot and there's like a lot of people think they're screws yeah people do i thought that at first yeah no yeah. Stitch and glue is you stitch it together with zip ties and you glue it together with epoxy. Yep. I used a screw to hold the transom in place yep, while same. I was but then I removed it after the glue set. I think I used two, but I, I left think I did too. but I left them. You left them? Yep. I Probably did. not a bad yeah. idea. I was like, I ah, just keep the holes full, like I didn't want any Right. Right. But um if you had to do it over again. What would be your thoughts on the kit with the pre-cut panels? So this goes back to what we were talking about earlier with the like the paper yeah. that already comes. Yeah. So I have a buddy that's building one with the paper. And he was like halfway done with his boat, like through the summer. That's and I crazy. was like, man, you just didn't have the experience. It took me like a year and a half to build this thing. Yeah. You know, 30 minutes a time is like a Johnny Cash song, you know, right. it's like very small chunks. <laughs> but... I think, I don't know if I would do the kit. If I was doing like a bit, a bigger boat, because I thought about, I actually originally I was going to do a size up from this, and then I realized exactly how big it was, okay. and it was not, it was going to have to be a trailer, and I was like, that's just too much. Right. 
Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know if I would do the cutout panel. I like the thing of like taking a flat sheet of wood and turning it into a, yes. a floating device, like kind of by myself. And then I'm living yes. with like the mistakes because you look at this and you can see every little thing that you did right well or you didn't do well or all the improvements, which I think is cool. Like oh, I think, I think that it adds, is too. adds the experience. But yeah, you could. I mean, the boat is a story that yeah. every time someone comes out in the garage with you, you can right. tell the whole story every yeah. time. You're not buying a Ranger. It's not like you're <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. If I had to do it over again, I would do it the exact same way. Do you think you're going to build another boat? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think in the short term, no. I think I'm going to spend some time enjoying this boat. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I think I'm going to enjoy a clean garage. <laughs> and I kind of want to build some other things. Like what? Um, simple. I want to do some furniture. I want to no. build a table. Um, I want to build... Uh, See, that's the thing is like you build all that stuff and it's like the tools to build all that kind of stuff is a lot more than it takes to even build this. I know. You're right. I was just looking at a table today that I wanted to build that requires a pocket hole jig. Yep. Yeah. Which which a lot of them. They're cool. Yeah. I want one, but I don't have it. It's something yeah. I'm going to have to go buy right. before I even start Dang building it. the table. Gosh, where too bad. I had 90% of the tools that this boat required. Yep. Yeah. So it's definitely a garage project. It can be done in a garage with simple tools. Yep. No problem. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. The grand finale of things that I want to talk about my boat anyways. So I learned. Well, let me just tell the story. So Kelsey had never been out on the boat before. So one weekend we went to her parents' house in Marble Falls. And we dropped Noah off. And we got up Saturday morning. And we went out on the boat together. Nope. Um, we spent the entire morning out on the lake, fished a little bit, didn't catch anything. It got real hot real fast. And it was a big weekend, so there was a lot of traffic yeah. on the bo- on the lake. Um, but Kelsey got to run the boat. I got to try to fly fish off the front. It was awesome. So then we figured we'd kind of end our date with lunch. So we pull the boat out of the water, and we go to a restaurant. And that particular day, it probably hit 100 degrees. It was early summer, but it was probably already hitting 100 And we parked the boat in the parking lot. We went in to eat. We were in there for probably an hour. I come back out and I notice as I'm driving down the road, you know, when I'm driving down the road, I can look in my rear view mirror and see my grab rail. And it's always perfectly, you know, the top of the grab rail is parallel with the top of my tailgate. And something I always look at because that's an indicator if the boat shifted. Well, I notice it's listing pretty good it's not parallel anymore like what in the world is going on and so i pull off the side of the road and i go out there and i check it and the boat has not moved nothing is loose it seems fine and so i get back to her dad's house and we park it in his garage and i pointed it out to him i said what do you think is going on and he said i bet that foam inside heated up and expanded and i thought no i don't think it does that I don't think it would expand once it's set. I think the foam is the foam once it's set. I started thinking about it, and the air inside of the hull heated up and expanded (laughs) like a balloon. And it popped the deck up, and I'm pretty sure it might have broken some of my glued joints in there. We need to put a gauge on that sucker and see. Like, that's a lot of pressure. It was a lot. Well, it was so much that I... I removed one of the screws from the base of the grab rail, and it came spewing out of there. I mean, it was... It's like hissing, yeah. For 20 seconds. <laughs> and finally, after about 30 minutes, that grab rail kind of went back to its natural oh place. Oh, gosh. It's still listing a little bit. Not oh, really, really even noticeable. No, no. Um, but, so, lesson learned, you need to vent your deck. It's got to have some vents. Otherwise, that heat... That air in your deck is going to heat up and expand. And so I think the way I'm going to fix my problem, right now the screw is still removed. And (laughs) I'm just going to leave it out until I need to, I guess until I get on the water. Because it didn't do it on the water. The water cooled it enough to where it never expanded. It wasn't expanded It was sitting in the parking lot during lunch that it expanded. So I think how I'm going to fix it is I'm going to remove my grab rail. I'm going to drill a hole where one of the feet is sitting. And then I'm going to drill a hole in the 
underside of the top of the grabber. Oh, I got you. And that yeah. way it can all it's vent It's just a whole there. Uh, big vent. A big vent. But something to consider is that the inside of that boat is made up of multiple chambers. Yeah. So if you do a really good job of gluing <laughs> your deck down, it's going to seal each chamber independently. Yeah. And then you would have to vent all of those. So I think... I think you're just better than the average bear at uh, gluing all this I stuff. will say it was a good test of how how well that sucker is glued together. <laughs> but it, it's going to happen to other people out there for sure. And I think the way around it is maybe... Maybe create some kind of a vent between your chambers, like at the top edge of your wood. Maybe yeah, cut, you know, a if you just have a little shape, crease, a little something. Yeah, and then do a vent where your grab rail yep. is installed. That's the best way I can figure it out. You could probably also go through uh, like your front hatch, but I didn't want to drill a hole in that. No, I want to keep that. Yeah, I try and keep it all separate. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's a big deal because it it caused a little bit of damage to the boat i don't think it's going to be a big deal um yeah but it over time it definitely could have caused a, a major problem that's so, wild oh it, it was blew so up like a weird, balloon man. that would be terrifying i had no idea what was going on yeah and then it fine i removed that screw and it just <laughs> it just kept spewing out of there what is uh anything cool like you've got the push pole on there is there anything else that you would put on to it like any other additions that you'd want to add to it um have you heard of the people call them float pods there's also that's kind of like the nickname there's a a real name for them and someone's going to comment and tell me what it is but on the behind the transom a pod like on either side of your boat motor to help with the stability in the back. No. And what that would do is There's it would like create jack plates, but that's like for running for like yeah, leveling. Yeah, uh, and a jack plate I might do too. But these are these would give the back of the boat more buoyancy. Oh. And then you could install a a, uh, a polling platform. Oh man. So I have thought about this, and yeah. I have like drawn up sketches on like how I would do this. Mm -hmm. And I finally, after almost falling out of, so I've like used my cooler. Yes. So I have straps for mine at the front. So you can see right behind the hatch. Yes. There's two straps so I can tie down the cooler there or I can put it in between the grab rail. Okay. And this is the, I don't know what size that is, 35. Okay. So that 35 goes right in between there. You can stand on that, but when you're standing on the end of this thing, like I think it would be great if you use that as like a pulling platform. Yeah. As long as you could strap it down, because it's a pretty good height. And if you're up on the front of the deck, you're way high up above the water. I bet. Like, you feel like you are <laughs> you are standing on the top of a Coke bottle. Like, it is not comfortable, I guess. You don't it's feel pretty like you tippy have up the... there. Well, yeah, it, it's definitely tippy. And if you have another person, but, like, you can feel, like, all the weight shifts very fast. Yeah. I, man, on the pulling platform, though, I just... Might... I don't know. Too I don't much know for this how boat. much... How, how uh, buoyant those things are. That'd be kind of cool though. I'm not familiar, but I can see it being a huge advantage if you wanted to do like the front as a casting platform. I think it would help yes. with that. Yeah, I could see that, yep. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, and I don't know. It, it would, if you wanted to do the float pods, it would have to be done during the construction of the boat because I think once it's painted, once it's glassed, fared, and painted, yeah. I don't think there's any attaching it correctly oh, okay i'm not too familiar with how these i mean you might be able to to fab something up that screws in but again i don't like poking holes in my boat yeah. so yeah. once it's at this stage <laughs> there's no more screws there's no more holes there's, right uh, uh nope so that would have to be done during the construction of the boat i think um anything else i would add Maybe a jack plate. I haven't run yeah. into a situation where I would need one, but I'm sure I will, especially when I get it back down the You know the what coast. you need is like a half dozen shear pins. Have you sheared a pin yet? I have not. I've sheared a pile of pins. I'm I probably just like the worst boating person ever. No, I, well, and that motor you're using, so this, that oh, motor yeah, you're using. Oh, yeah, this is a great story. My, it, yeah, this my is My grandpa, a good story. like, yeah, yes. that thing is, it's an old five horse Mariner, yes, right? Yes, And I don't even know if Mariner makes boat motors anymore. Uh, no, they don't. So, and I remember <laughs> being a little kid, running in a little 12 foot john boat with that motor yes. up and down the colorado river and my grandpa would run in lake ray roberts we run a lot yep. of lakes and with that motor you can look at that motor wrong and it will shear a pin <laughs> like 
I promise <laughs> you. I've seen them all. <laughs> are you making homemade pins yet? Oh, yeah. What do, what do you make them out of? Brass rod. No, I like, I, I try and like, I measure the correct rod. You know, it's based on the horsepower and the size of the pin to how quickly it shears so you're not like shearing anything in the motor, right? Yeah. I've taken apart that holy lower unit. I feel like Have a you? real, oh, yes, multiple times. Oh, cool. And uh, just to make sure like I'm not uh, ruining anything. And you need to have spare shear pins, like especially on the small yes. engines like that, because yep. you're going to hit reefs because yep. you're running in shallow water. Yep. So you're going to hit oysters a lot. Yep. And you're going to hit rocks and everything else. Like I've wound up like crab trap, like the hurricanes run all the crab oh, traps, yeah, like crab yeah. trap line runs across it and they pulls a, a pin. <laughs> so we were fishing in Galveston and like you can be standing knee deep and not see your knees. It's like terrible yeah and so you're standing there and and we were running way back in one of these cuts sheared a pin an oyster reef and so we like running in the side and it was me and a buddy and so i'm like standing knee deep well you're like knee deep but you're like six or eight inches like in the mud like it's just so soft so i'm standing down there and you can just like pull the engine up so i'm you know popping the impeller off yep. and <laughs> doing the whole deal and he's like hey man uh, there's an alligator back there. Ooh. I was like, there's not an alligator back there. And of course, I'm like giving the look. <laughs> like, oh, there's I'm not, there's look not one back there, is there? There's a freaking alligator back there. Was it really? Oh, man, you've never seen a pin get changed so fast. <laughs> it was like a 30-second oil change, man. Oh, it was fantastic. Man. But yeah, the, like the brackish water, there's like, we caught a alligator gar. There's real alligators that we actually caught an alligator gar. Yeah. One of the first fish I caught out of this boat was no lie like a 60 pound one of these alligators was it cars. really oh my gosh what? it was like 10 minute fight on this thing oh my and gosh that thing we measured it from like the end of the the platform it went past the grab rail like what? it was it looked humongous that it was so amazing big. but fish like it so good i've had fish jump in the boat oh man you got it it's, it's a fish attractor i'm telling you it does a great job i know the one time i went out with you we caught fish oh yeah yeah um my boat admittedly has only been fished out of twice i did a test run then i took it to the colorado and my buddy Mitchell caught a real nice bass. That's actually yep. the first fish on this boat was that bass. Nice. So I was happy. It wasn't me, but that's okay because it was a, a good go. fish. Um, and then I caught, I was trolling. I was all by myself <laughs> at this point. I, I dropped Mitchell off and I was like, I'm going to keep running. And so I cast, I had like this little, I don't know, probably like a Rapala or something tied on. And I chunked it out there and I put it in my rod holder and I'm just <laughs> taking in the view. <laughs> And all That's of a sudden crazy. that rod goes, gunk, 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 gunk. And I'm like, oh, I got one. <laughs> and I reeled it in, and it was the most beautiful blue gill you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, and then I took it fishing with Kelsey, the time yep. we realized that the thing blows up like a balloon. Yeah. And we didn't catch anything. Uh, so two fish have been caught out of that boat. There you go. We've got to change that. How, do you do um, anchoring? Have you, like, how oh, do you get an anchor? That, you I am that? so glad you brought that up because that's an issue. So the plan was, you know, like the Cajun anchors nope. where it's just like a pin or like a, oh, a marsh anchor or a stakeout rod. Yes. So this is my favorite. That, yes. The whole reason I brought that. this up is my next door neighbor. So like when you're building a boat in your garage and you're like out you get late attention. at night, your mm -hmm. neighbors are like, what in the hell are you banging on at like nine yep. o'clock at night? So yep. my neighbor... He did like, oh, like a telephone <clears throat> pole. So that's a grounding rod. That's a oh, fiberglass like grounding rod yeah. for um, telephone poles. Cool. And he was like, man, you're going to need an anchor for this boat. Yeah. So he's like invested, you know, like everybody gets invested when you start building this thing. It's yeah. like the yep. com community yep. comes together and folks are like, oh, we need to, <laughs> we need to help with this, yep. this poor guy. And uh, so he, he took it upon himself, and he's like, I'm going to build you an anchor. I was like, oh, that's cool, man. Greatly appreciate it. Lo and behold, dude shows up a few weeks later with, you know, it's probably a eight- or nine-foot grounding rod, and he took, um, basically put a little T-post at the top, mm -hmm. and it's got uh, bike handlebars at the top. Yeah, it does. And, you, <laughs> and, then, he made, and then he made like an eight-foot rope. So I can tie the rope off to the grab rail, yep. tie it off to the bottom, and yep. you want to tie it off the top and roll yourself over. And then go out to the marsh and you can drive that thing down, you know, four or five feet. You just sit yep. there and, and hang on it and it'll just like work its way down. Yep. I've That's used perfect. that thing all over the place. It is fantastic. That is perfect. That and is. And it'll bend over like and you can drift off. And yep. it, it's 
great. That's what they do is that, that little bit of flex yep. is nice. Because yep. I used, when I was first getting into bay fishing in my kayak years ago, I think my first one was like a little piece of rebar. Yeah. And that sucker had no give. And <laughs> so it you just hit that yeah, line. Just, <laughs> and then eventually yeah. it would work itself out of the mud. Yeah. And you just start. So that's perfect. Oh, and, that's, and it will not come out. Like you can drift on it. Like I feel very secure that if I drive that thing down there, the boat is not going anywhere. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be like that deep in and the boat will not drift off. That so, is awesome. I'd highly recommend those. What it's I would a pain like to haul around though. Oh yeah. Because you're laying yeah. it in the bottom of the deck and it's got mud all over it. And so that, that adds to why it's not white anymore, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's I, the, I think if I were to do that and I, I want to do that, I kind of want to put like a little bracket mounted on the back of the transom yeah. where I can just slip it through it. Yep. And then that away. Or if you did one of these eyes or two of these eyes. Oh yeah, that'd be perfect. You did two That's of those eyes and just drop them straight through. And then you're always, you know, your bow is. It's off a pivot. Yeah. It, yep. Yep. I think it would work really well. But yeah, I have not come up with my solution. Because that is a pain solution. is tying it off sometimes. Yeah. Because you're like trying to tie it off to the grab wire. If you had like a consistent, just drop it through some eyelets. I think that would um, be really nice. Who is the company? I forget who it is. There's a company that makes a little, a little anchor that's electronic. Oh, yeah. The, uh, oh, dang it. I know. I can't. I Gosh, think dang it. People are going to be like, <laughs> it's this company. Um. But yeah, it's got like a little button and it just bzzz, comes uh, up and then bzzz. Those things are like it's bass a, boat forever, you know. It's, it's um, power uh, pole. Power pole, thank there you. It power is. pole, and I think they built it for kayaks. Oh, really? I think it's made for kayaks, but, but it was. But it's the same deal. It's these fiberglass rods on the end of them. Yeah, but it's smaller. It's probably half the size. Oh, no, they're super short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah. But the would, end of it, though, that sticks into the mud or muck or whatever is that, and it's actually like a little hydraulic yep. power unit you stick under your deck and runs off your battery. Yeah and then you can run it up and out. It's super clever. Yeah. Pretty yeah. neat design. Kind of seems like one more thing to break when that only requires like lift it up, push it down. You know, yeah. I yeah. like your- I don't know how you'd put that on something like this. Right. But, but for I the like bigger the, boats, it's awesome. Yeah. I like the simplicity of just sticking it in the ground yeah. and tying it off. Yep. But well, man, I'm kind of afraid my phone might die soon. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but tell us about what you got going on with Bracker real quick. I want people to hear about that because um, it's super cool. Yeah. Well, after I finished making the boat, I pretty shortly after there started making, I wanted to make stuff for the outdoors mm -hmm. to like, continue with the boat stuff. I should have gone into rod building or something <laughs> like that, but I kind of like pivoted a little bit. <laughs> and uh, I started doing... Um, Rattling antlers, I had a pair, I used to work on a ranch in West Texas, and I had a pair of antlers sitting on my desk for like, I don't know, like eight or ten years. Yeah. And finally I was like, I bet I could make a pair of rattling antlers out of those. Yep. So I started looking up like different ways, you know, I was like, oh, it'd be kind of neat to put some leather on them or something, and I was thinking about wrapping them, and then figured out you could kind of stitch them up, and then started doing it for other people, and now uh, make rattling antlers leather grips on them. I do a whole bunch of engraving on them and mm -hmm. wallets and belts and just kind of fun leather stuff. So oh, man. I've been trying to build all kinds of different stuff. I want to start doing like some bow slings and some oh, gun slings. And a bow sling. I want to start making some other, yeah, yeah I, I only make, you know, the antlers is the only thing I make consistently and then everything else is kind of, you know, I'll make one or two of everything else. So. Well, I'm wearing a belt right now that you made for me. Oh, nice. There and you go. it's my everyday belt. Nice. And uh, that's the way I do belts is I buy one and I wear them till they yeah, go I'm away. Saying. I think this one's going to last a long time. I think so, man. I, this Let's might be the last it. belt unless I get big and fat. <laughs> this is, I might need to extend it one day. Those things are thick for but sure. But you, you made me the belt so far. I love it. You nice. made my father-in-law that sleeve for his dominoes. Oh, yeah. He loves yeah, it. Yeah, Although yeah. I will say uh, you asked me the dimensions for his dominoes. Yep. And I was like, oh, they're just standard dominoes, <laughs> dude. Just make it. And... That it was tight. It was a tight fit. But oh, is it? We've I spent like an hour wedging those dominoes in there, and you now slide them in and it's out? stretched and it's perfect. Oh, it, it will stretch. It's, okay. I mean, good. it's just like a perfect fit now. All right, good. So I was gonna say, if you need it, like I'll, I'll restitch it and we'll get no, you one that fits. No, it's good now. And I told him, I was like, I think we can nice. make this work, and it's it's gonna be great. Good. And we've played two or three games of forty-two with the. He puts a field notes a notepad in the sleeve for the dominoes to keep yep. track of your games. And my father-in-law is very 
uh, he's very meticulous about it. He will not, like, sometimes we'll play half games of 42. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. And those are not allowed to go in oh, that notebook. Oh, really? It's got to be a full game to go in the notebook. So my wife and I, when I built the first one of those, I had, like, one of the field note things. Because, you know, like, my dad and my uncle would play, like, all the time when we were growing up. Yep. My dad and your dad. Yep. And they'd, like, go find, like, a napkin or, like, some random piece of paper. Yep. And they'd write it. And then it's, like, everybody's, like, he said, she said, like, of who won because they've got, like, this, you know, 10 years worth of history on it. Well, now I was like, you know what? We're putting a dedicated pouch yep. in here so that you can keep track of games. I love it. And so my <laughs> wife and I, like, we've got games going back to like 2018 of like when we started playing dominoes. And you can go back and see, and like, she gets real good about like, you know, she'll put the game there and then she'll put game notes underneath yeah, it. Yeah, that's of, right. Like, yeah. <laughs> the actual outcome. Oh, the, that's the awesome. The game. So I think it'll be really fun, you know, in a few years when yes. you've got like a field notes full of you know a whole bunch of games of dominoes right. i think it's pretty cool i think it's awesome and he he's already like dating each one yeah yeah that's what we do too like who the teams are yep and it yep it'll be something we can look back on oh, in yeah. years and that's be like, awesome oh, man. i'm so glad it's you like that yeah good, he good. loves it and then uh um you made something oh i've got i've got one of your sets of rattling antlers i think it was one it was an oh, oddball yeah, set yeah it was an oddball set i yeah. think yeah but man they are gorgeous Good, and I, I haven't good. used them yet, but this year. Oh, we I need mean, to go this year. We need to figure it out. We need to go, go to Mason. Yeah. We'll rattle up a little bitty eight point because we got <laughs> a, a bunch of them. Eight points. <laughs> we got a bunch so of them. I'm so excited. <laughs> you know, I'm going to rope that uh, sucker. Uh, how can people find you if they want to check out your stuff and order a set of rattling yeah, antlers yeah. or a belt or some ant or uh, uh, the domino pouch or a cap? What else you got on there? Oh, Those that's most of it. But I'll make pretty much anything I think is interesting. Okay, like I try yeah. to make anything that's outdoor related. I try and do memorable well, leather goods. And your antlers, you said that you engrave them. Yep. You don't just engrave them. They're like perfect. The engraving <laughs> looks so good. So. I saw the set you did for Yeti. I think it was like a door prize. or. Oh, we did them for uh, the Total Archery Challenge. Yes. Yeah, so we did a bunch of their sponsors on, on some of the sets. I was pretty excited with those. Those they logos looked good. so good. Good. I mean, I yeah. Them, so yeah. high quality stuff for sure. You do the... Uh, you do like paracord between the antlers, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Uh, and it's some kind of a braid, some form of, I don't know if it's like a standard, like the way your sister did it when you were little. No, but no, I wish it was that easy. For I sure. figure it looks pretty. Yeah. It, now we got a bunch of different, bunch of different ways to do it, but yeah. kind of whatever, whatever folks want it to be. And yeah, it's, it's fun. I like working with antlers and I like getting, I mean, you meet a lot of cool people yeah. doing this yep. and kind of getting to, I don't get to do it for my day job, but to be kind of in the industry and, Work with yeah. all the folks that do it on a daily basis is pretty fun. Right. So, Bracca Collective, right? Yep. Yeah. And I what's your Instagram? That's uh, Bracca Co or Bracca Collective, I think. And, and then there's a website too, but usually Instagram's the easiest way to do it. I think. Is it B? It's B R A C A C O? Yeah. Bracca Co. And if they search that on Instagram, they'll find it. Yeah, it should pull up. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, if you're looking for antlers or belts or anything cool like that, hit up Bracca Co. For sure. All right, man. I think we could probably talk about these boats all night. Probably so. To the point where we might have to do a second one of these because <laughs> we need to tell stories. Yeah, do one where they're fishing. Oh, so we got to <laughs> talk about doing this. So we were talking about having the uh, the dinghy derby. The dinghy derby. Okay, so it's a podcast I listen to. The guys are Taylor Trash, like a tailing redfish. <laughs> Taylor Trash, fly fishing. They've got a podcast that's it'll make you chuckle. Every year they do as a fundraiser for their Marine Discovery Center there in New Smyrna Beach, Florida, wherever they are. Um, they do what they call a dinghy derby. <laughs> and it's all the guys bring out their boats and it sounds like it's everything from solo skiffs to big giant bay boats. And they do, it's like checkpoints. I think they all have to hit certain checkpoints and they get some kind of token that's redeemable for something. And then at the end they do a giant raffle and barbecue and they drink a bunch of beer and have a good time. It would be fun to do something like that one day. We got to figure something out though. Like, yeah, starting to know some people that like make boats and any little boats or you know whatever boats. I think it'd be fun to do something. I think it would too. Out. I think it's something to keep in mind and maybe start planning for. Yep, that'd be awesome. All right, man. Well, let's cut this off before my phone dies and, and get uh, home. Let, let's plan on doing it again. Yeah, I got to get home. It's not that far of a drive, but all right, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's fun. All right. Again. Bye, everybody.